Hey everyone, so today we're actually going to collect our data and calculate our test statistic. Notice now that we haven't actually collected any data from steps one through three. And that's because we wanted to be honest with ourselves. We wanted to state a known alternative hypothesis. We wanted to identify test statistic and probability distribution and identify or specify a decision rule all before collecting the data. And this is to avoid any data mining and to allow us to be honest with ourselves without manipulating the data. To prove any hypothesis. So without further ado, let's continue. So we need to take our prices data and we're going to convert it to percent changes. Let's say percent change. And we're going to call these returns. So now we'll have returns data and let's output this to see what that looks like. We'll plot that. There we go. And now we can take this returns data, and we can separate it into two time series. So we're going to call this returns, and these will be the two time series before and after the end of 2008. So this is going to be 2004, and we can use the dot lock function, part of pandas, and we're going to look at 2004, 01, 01, to 2008, 12, 31. And we're going to call this time series one, TS1. And you can just take a look at what this looks like, TS1.head, like so. There we go. And then finally, we're going to take the same, and I'm just going to copy this, and we're going to call this time series two, TS2. And this, these will be the return series after then the 2008. So that'd be 2009 through 2013, 1231. And just to verify the count of these, we want the 60 months before and the 60 months after. We can just say ts1.count at 60 and TS2.count, 60. All right. And if we want to plot this and see what the distributions look like with a histogram, we can do that pretty easily. We can just take our time series 1.hist for histogram, and we'll specify bins equals 20. Plot that. And there we go. And we can do the same thing for our... Time series two, TS2, plot. So we can see there seems to be a difference between the distributions, but of course we want to actually test that with our test statistic. So now we're going to actually calculate that. So let's go back to our formula here. We need to determine the means, the difference between the means. And so we have the difference between the means of time series one and time series two minus our hypothesized means. And remember, that's just going to be zero. This whole term will be zero because we hypothesized that it's going to be zero. And divided by this pooled variance. So let's begin with the, begin the top numerator first. So we're going to calculate our means of our time series. So that's pretty simple. All we need to do is just take. TS1 dot mean. There we go. We have our team. And we're just going to call this x1. That means x1. And then I'm going to do the same thing for our time series 2. We're going to call this ts2 dot mean. There we go. 
And now we just need to find the difference, or we need to find, and now we just need to find the variance for each of these. And so to do that, we can just say ts1.var, and we're going to call this s1 equals ts1.var. And we'll do the same thing for time series two. And again, why am I doing this? If we look at our formula here, our test statistic, I am calculating the variance for each of each of these uh, time series here, variance here and variance here. So we're going to calculate this pooled variance and put it into our test statistic formula. So we've already calculated numerator here. We just need to calculate this pooled variance. So to do that, we'll continue. And I was going to say SP for pooled variance is just equal to, and I'll put this in parentheses, other parentheses, and one. And remember, And remember, we specified N1, or the number of observations, before in our last video. And that was just 60 and 60. So we're just going to say N1 minus 1. And I'm just calculating the pooled variance. Multiplied by the variance of time series 1 plus, and I'll put this in another parentheses, N2, which is just the number of observations in time series 2 minus 1 multiplied by the variance of time series 2. We're going to take all of that divided by the degrees of freedom. So that will be our pooled variance, SP. And so we have our pooled variance formula calculated here. And we just need to plug it into our test statistic. So to do that, we're just going to say x1 minus x2. That's our numerator that we calculated. We'll put this in one parentheses. Minus our hypothesized difference, which is 0. Divided by, and we're just going to say mp dot square root, because again, this is, if we look at our formula, we're taking this term and we're raising it to the 0.5, which is the same thing as taking the square root of this. So we're going to say mp dot square root. And I'm just going to say, put these in parentheses, s, our pooled variance, divided by n1, Plus, and again, this is another parentheses here, pooled variance divided by n2 to run that. And that should be a plus sign. We get negative 2.217816. And is that larger than our t critical value that we had earlier? Let's see. It is one, it's larger than 1.98. So we can reject our null hypothesis. And of course, there's always an easier way to do this. We can just take our stats library, stats.ttest, independent, because this is an independent test. And we're going to say TS1, T1, 
TS2. And we're again, we're assuming equal variance amongst the samples. And we're going to say NAN policy equals emit, but that shouldn't be an issue because we have all the values. And we can just run that. We should get the same value. And we do. We get negative 2.217816. And we also get a p-value of 0 0.028, which is less than 0 0.05. So we can reject the null hypothesis. So if you like this video, please subscribe. In our next video, we'll talk about the making our statistical decision. So until next time, thank you.